Sunday, October 2nd. You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. As warm conditions continue over in the south central plains and actually the warmth is just going to intensify, the first arctic cold front of the season moves into the mid-America part of this country. This includes Minneapolis, Bismarck, North Dakota, Chicago, Illinois, even St. Louis, Missouri. We have an arctic low pressure system which will have a trough coming all the way down. Recent models show much greater amplification than earlier models. This thing is going to dig deeper, uh, further south than what was originally thought at one point and bring its strong Arctic front through the Midwest. The East Coast will also be getting this strong cold front. By the time you get to the East Coast, it's the terminology Arctic is no longer really the most accurate way or it's a little bit deceiving since temperatures are not going to drop as intense as they do here in the Midwest. Hard freeze is expected for areas which receive this Arctic air here in the Midwest. For many locations, it's the first hard freeze, maybe even everywhere, for the season with widespread frost expected as well. For the Chicago area and South Bend area, this is Friday night and Saturday night. Areas closer to Lake Michigan in the Chicago area might be spared from the frost, but areas in South Bend may not. St. Louis, Missouri may also have a chance for seeing frost, especially Friday night. Uh, Some of the plants are still sensitive to that and the temperatures are going to struggle in many locations to get out of the 40s. In St. Louis, we're going to see highs go into the low 60s, as is typically the case, where the temperatures are about 10 degrees warmer there than in the Chicago area, where highs are expected at this point to be in the low 50s. Realize that the sun has set for the winter over the extreme northern parts of the Arctic, and temperatures therefore are dropping rapidly in that part of the area, and this air is coming down south. It's also a strong high pressure system at a thousand. MB, some say 1,040 MB, some say 1,030 MB. We will have to convert that over to the the, the inches in mercury system, uh, which would be approximately uh, 30.1. That's about it. It's not too bad. Uh, Today we also have some high wind warnings in effect for places off on the East Coast, especially New Jersey, Atlantic City, Missouri, Atlantic City, New Jersey. We have high wind warnings. You know, the hurricane has weakened, but we still have a wind tunnel, which is being produced from a tight pressure gradient between that low pressure system well out at sea and the high pressure that's building in from Southeast Canada. You know, there really is precipitation that should be falling in the New York area, but it probably isn't. And the reason why it's not is because the air is so dry coming out of Canada that the precipitation is evaporating before it's touching the ground. Now, I'm not there right now, so I can't really tell you what's going on over there. But that's in most likelihood the precipitation is evaporating before it is touching the ground. Moving over into back into the Midwest, we have in Bismarck, North Dakota. You know, we have these thunderstorms that might be developing later on today. Some of these storms could produce hail. These are it's not the large hail, but it's just that the temperatures are about freezing so close to the surface that you know any type of wind you get could produce hail in that part of the area. So it's questionable whether there will be severe storms or not, but hail is a possibility and severe weather is always a possibility in that part of our country. We have a powerhouse snowstorm, says the European computer model, setting itself up for the countries north of India. An extreme powerhouse with 40, 50 inches of snow. I can't find much information about that, so we're going to have to just leave it at that for now. We have extreme heat developing over in China, places about 100 or 200, 300 miles southwest of Shanghai, China. 
where temperatures are about 100 degrees. And these are towns where the normal high is right around 80 degrees. We also have unseasonable warmth taking place. July level warmth taking place in the Pacific Northwest with record highs. Temperatures are flirting with record highs for many, many towns. It's high temperatures also over there, 15 to 20 degrees above normal in many locations. We have temperatures in Central California going into the mid-90s over the next couple of days. We're going to speak about South Africa, actually. We have unbelievable heat taking place over the parts of South Africa where temperatures are in the low hundreds in some of those towns but the dew point is below zero extreme fire danger expected there but also the wet bulb temperature is actually lower there than it is in many of the cities here in the Midwest so what that means is that you can easily solve the heat by getting wet that's what that means now we know that in this case, the sweat isn't going to do too much good because the evaporation rate is so intense that you're not even, it's not even going to have a chance to stay on your body. So it's very dangerous stuff. But if you can get wet, if you can put a wet towel, something like that, you can significantly cool a surface. The area which has the water, the evaporating area, the surface should be able to cool to 50 degrees. And in that 100 degree heat, I think it's actually 60 degrees but people should be okay if their air conditioner is not working so they're you know a mist there are other ways to do it over there as opposed to some of the places in india and some other places uh united arab emirates right now their wet bulb temperature in is it dubai or dubai uh it's dubai i think uh, the wet bulb temperature is 80 degrees over there, and they have sea breezes that develop in the afternoon, but they, because it, they, in terms of temperatures, the air is, I guess, a little bit cooler on the ocean, but in reality, it probably feels hotter in the afternoon as a suffocating sauna conditions come in off of the Persian Gulf over there, p pushing dew points to 80 degrees and temperatures well into the 90s. Uh, we're going to see a uh, of course, the continuation of brutal heat, as always, in Dubai. Uh, and people in Dubai, probably, it's just the same routine over and over again. It's amazing the, the little precipitation that they receive over there with such high humidity and such intense heat. One would think that there would be more instability, but there isn't. And the ocean water temperatures are very hot. Going ahead, looking at the winter for this year, we this is the third year in a row where we're going to be having a La Nina. Forecasters expect La Nina to weaken for the second half of the winter. You know, a good argument could be made to say that, you know, a similar pattern this winter as last winter and the winter before because all winters are a La Nina winter. The only thing, this is crucial, crucial difference. An, an enormous volcano erupted last year, I think it was January, and that is going to possibly have a profound impact on this upcoming winter. Usually, these types of uh, volcanoes bring global cooling. In this case, the volcano erupted underwater in this produced an enormous amount of water vapor that not only went into the uh, stratosphere, but even went into the stratosphere. And the thinking right now is that the water vapor is going to produce some warming. <clears throat> Excuse me. The impacts of all this really are not known. Uh, it's really not known because sometimes clouds, there's a whole movement to say that clouds are actually causing global cooling. Others say it's causing global warming. Also, the warming in the upper atmosphere, that also can cause the polar vortex to weaken, bringing brutal cold air down here. So, warming could mean warmer. It also could mean colder. So, it's really not uh, clear at this time. You could, I refer you to AccuWeather. You could try to figure it out or the National Weather Service, or perhaps we'll have more clarity later on. We are expecting the weather to warm up a little bit after this. It technically is an Arctic high, but uh, it's, you know, it's a little bit too early for people to use that terminology yet, but 
certainly the trough is originating from the Arctic. Uh, once that moves to our east, we'll get a southerly flow, a little bit of some warmer temperatures coming on Sunday, and I do not know what's going to be happening after that. Thank you.